Splatoon 3 Sam Run has a lot going for it. Big Runner allows you to play on the multiplayer stages, Extra Work allows you to play on a set C with no RNG, and the regular mode is pretty good for having some casual gameplay. However, all these game modes still feel too closely related to each other. And although the Sizzle Season's Big Run and Extra Work have changed a lot of things regarding Sam Run game modes, I think there can be some different things and potentially a full new game mode that completely changes Sam Run. With all being said, I hope you guys liked today's video, and let's get into the game mode concept. First of all, what is this new game mode going to be about? Well, I think the idea for this game mode should be taking place in a completely different location devoid of all other Sam Run maps. A unique and secluded place that is completely different to the rest of the game modes. And I feel like some place down in the sewers could be a good place for this, considering how Sam Run has come from the oceans already. I figured we can take that concept and push it one step further by going underground. And if we're going to make a new location, we're going to need a new map for this. And so with the idea of a sewage in mind, I give you Machi Triple Tail. The name of which taking inspiration off of the Santa Machi Reclamation Center in Japan, as well as the Atlantic Triple Tail Fish. Now unlike any other Sam Run stage in Splatoon 3, Machi Triple Tail is completely different different, as rather it being an open location that takes place outside on the surface is rather an underground enclosed location that is closed in from all sides. There are two distinctive ways that Samus can get in, the first of which can be one of the four different sewage pipes that connect to the main location. This is where things like bosses and cohogs will come from because they're pretty large. And then there are holes in the ceiling that allows lesser Samus to drop in from, so things like small fry and chop. You can think of the holes in the ceiling as similar to that of manholes in real life, where you can fall down into the sewer system. Now the size of the map is going to be incredibly small. Small, smaller than any other stage in Splatoon's history of that. For reference, here's Mahi Mahi Resort in Splatoon 3, and here's Machi Triple Tail in comparison to its size. It is a tiny, tiny map. But that's the idea behind it. It's meant to give you the idea of a claustrophobic and tight location from which you have no escape and nowhere to go. You can only fight and defend. Now the new game mode and map are pretty cool by itself, but I've decided to go above and beyond and I've created five new concepts for custom events that can be added to this kind of mode and only this mode. First of which is going to be a specials only event. Your main sub weapons will be taken away and your special gauge will be constantly maxed out, similar to how you can use it in the story mode, meaning you can use your special whenever and however you want. Wanted. But Moth, what if you get Wayne Breaker and you can't escape the salmon is chasing you? A very keen eye keyboard warrior. I've thought of a lot of these problems, and while I've maybe not gone every single one completely gone, I have thought of some ways to get around them, hence the reason for these blocks scattered throughout the map. If you get something like Wave Breaker and you can't defend yourself at all, you'll be able to jump back to this block to defend yourself from positioning, which will allow you to regroup and move away from the team. There's also a version of the stage where I've thought about moving the block or the grates to make it surgeable so you can get on top of the grates with ease, but that's a concept for another time. The second event is no ink refill. For certain Splatoon 3 story mode levels, you have to run around using limited ink. You can't refill your rank in your squid form, and if you run out, you're dead. Now while the act of blowing up instantly after your ink runs out will not be transmitted over to this game mode, the idea of not being able to refill your rank using your squid form will be taken, and instead you're gonna have to manage your ink tank and run around to specific refill spots where you can grab canisters to refill your ink. This adds an extra complexity to thinking about how you're gonna manage yourself. You've got your quota to me, along with lesser salmonids, but then you also have this ink tank problem which you have to manage as well. The next mode is Small Fry Shower. Instead of going around and killing bosses to get golden eggs and then throwing them into the basket, you're gonna have your quota met already, and you're gonna have to defend your basket from Small Fry, which will rain down from the manholes which we talked about earlier. These Small Fry will act similar to how Glow Flies act, and they'll come in swarms trying to get the eggs. And if enough Small Fry reach the basket for a certain amount of time, eggs will start pouring out of the basket and firing every direction. So not only do you have to take out the salmonids, clean your basket off with all the Small Fry, you then have to go and collect eggs if they do eventually reach a basket. Because unlike other modes where you can go and collect more eggs to fill up your basket and get your quota back, you will not have any other option but to go and collect these eggs. You might have 5 eggs over the quota to start with, so that can be a bit of a leeway, but it's still not enough to completely clear you for the entire wave. Not when you have hundreds of midgets running at you like a stampede from Yoshi's Island. Now when designing the tunnels for the stage, I was thinking what could be a good way to utilise these tunnels in an event? And this is where the Flood game mode comes into play. The game will start and after a certain amount of time, tsunami waves of certain heights will come and rush through the entire tunnel flooding the main section with eggs. And similar to how the tides work in regular Sam Run, this is the same concept here. You'll have low, medium and high types of tides. But instead of tide levels going up and down, it'll be flood levels that'll come and sweep through the entire area. Now while you can go down and get your golden eggs and fill up your quota, you gotta remember there are still more waves that will come in after this one. And the fact that it'll be random is that you have to always be on your toes, because it can happen at any time. And finally for a special event is Goldie Galore. Pretty much what the title of this event says, goldies are gonna spawn from any location on the map map and start rushing towards you. These goalies will drop a random amount of eggs which you'll have to throw straight into the basket and fill up your quota. The catch is that this quota is going to be extremely high compared to the rest of them. Not like your regular 24, 25 eggs you have to get, no, we're talking in the ranges of 50 to 60 eggs you need to collect. 
Now in terms of payment, the reward system is going to be a bit different to how other modes give out winnings. Instead of three runes that give out rewards once completed, there will be an infinite amount of waves that will dish out individual random rewards after each wave. These rewards can be between money, catalog experience, unique locker decorations, gear pieces, junks and much more. Now there's one main mechanic that I've yet to mention that makes this game mode impressively difficult. If you thought Executive 999 was hard, then I don't think you're ready for playing Sam Run with one life. In between rounds, you and your team will have the option to leave with your rewards and make bank, but you can also choose to stay and continue playing more waves. The downside with continuing is that you and your teammates risk losing everything that you've worked for. If you continue playing and all your team go down and lose, all your money, all your gear and all the items you've worked for will be lost to the stars. But there is an even bigger reason to continue playing. If your team manages to make it up to wave 100, you will receive a bonus reward of 500,000 coins and 50 gold scales on top of everything you've already won. To complete 100 waves is a huge feat and it feels right to reward the players that make it that far. With all being said, how does this compare to the rest of Sam Run? Well, it's mixed. It depends on how you look at it exactly. There's a lot of reasons to play this challenging game mode and to push your limits to the absolute max, but like a lot of game features, this is not for everyone. I've also considered maybe making this game mode like a solo version of Sam Run, a solo run if you will. And although there will be many changes to the game mode if this were the case, it will be very interesting to try and grind Sam Run solo style. I've also not found a clear way to incorporate King Salmonids into this yet, so that could be something to work on in the future. Speaking of things to work on, I would like you guys, yes, you, the viewer, to come up with ways to improve, rework, or implement things into this game mode concept. Any ideas are open for suggestions, and I'll try my best to read every single one of them. Go crazy, brainstorm away. At the end of the day, this is still a game mode concept that is completely fantasized and it's just stupid in concept. If you guys do like this sort of concept and video type and you want to see more of it, then please let me know in the comments. This video was really fun to make and I'd love to make more concept based videos in the future if you guys enjoy it. So be sure to hit that like and comment down below if you enjoy it because I would love to see your opinion on this. With all being said, thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you all next time.